Hi everyone, it's Nicole here for Lawn Fawn September Inspiration Week and today I'm featuring a card created with the Joy to the Woods stamp set and dies. I'm also using some of the stitched hillside borders, the stitched rectangles, and some of the snow day papers. To begin my card, I am using the largest A2 size stitched rectangle from the Large Stitched Rectangles collection. To die cut this background from some of the 6x6 snow day papers, even though you can see some of the little design along the bottom there, that's going to be covered up so I didn't worry too much about that. I really just wanted the blues for the winter sky. Next, I'm using the same A2 size stitched rectangle and then one of the stitched rectangles from the, I think the same collection, yes it is, and I taped them in place so they wouldn't shift. I did this because I wanted to create a frame for my card. So you can see where I laid that over my background pattern paper there. Next, I'm going to die cut another sheet of white cardstock using that A2 sized stitched rectangle. This is so that I can create some snow drifts or whatever for the scene I'm going to create. So taking my frame, I'm simply laying it there so I can see about how tall I need my snow drifts to be. I'm going to hold that in place, tape my snow drift down, and then I can run it through my Big Shot machine. And I'm going to repeat this twice so that I can get two of these snowy stitched hillside borders for the scene on my card. So you can see there that I covered up anything that might have been showing on that pattern paper along the bottom there. Go ahead and cut my other one from the other side. You don't have to cut two of these. You can get two borders from one die cut rectangle here. It's one of my favorite tricks for making the most of one of your basic die cut shapes when you're die cutting something smaller from it. Once I have that, I'm going to set my Big Shot aside for a second, grab my all of the, the die cuts I have so far, and next I am ready to start stamping some of my designs and coloring them in to kind of round out the entire scene I'm creating. I'm taking the birch trees from the Joy to the Woods stamp set, inking them up with Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and then I'll stamp them on some scrap pieces of paper. These are actually scraps from where I die cut all of the elements for my card. I love getting the most out of the scraps I have left and so many times I'm stamping my small elements on those scraps and either die cutting or fussy cutting them from those pieces. There's this little group of trees or the two little trees together and then there's a single tree as well. So I'm going to stamp several of these because I'm going to need quite a few to fill in the background of my card. Once I have all of those stamped, I'm going to stamp a couple of critters using the other scrap of paper. I am using the fox, the cardinal, the little tree stump, and the birdhouse from the Joy to the Woods stamp set. I only stamped the fox here. As I went along, I realized I would need a few more things. I'm going to speed through my coloring here. I'm using Copics to blend. I'm only going to share coloring just a, a couple of these trees here. I colored them all the same, but I did color in quite a few of them, so that takes a little bit more work, and I don't want to bore you all with coloring trees over and over. I'm just using some light browns here for my trees. I did go in with a little bit darker brown to add some shading and dimension. I've seen these colored all sorts of ways. It's so fun. I chose to go with some browns simply because I wanted a bit more color for my card. Um, I'm using a lot of white and I, I'm going to also be implement, implementing some vellum and I really wanted the trees to kind of show up with all of those things going on. Blending out any of those dark 
areas that I colored in a little bit with my mid-tone color. And I'll keep going over that until I get it blended out exactly the way I want. And go back in with my lightest color to blend it even more. So that's how I'm going to color the trees. I'll go ahead and finish the rest of those and then color some of the rest of the images. Once I had those colored, I die cut them. And I'm just going to pop one in here so you can kind of see the direction I was going as I was designing this card. I'll tuck those in behind some of the snow drifts. And I'll go ahead and finish coloring some of the rest of my images. Here's the cardinal. I'm going to use about three shades of red for him and a little bit of orange for his nose. I wanted to leave his tummy just a little bit lighter than the rest of him. I went in with an even deeper, darker red for some of those highlights and things. Oh, and I was a little out of frame. I apologize for that. So as I got him colored in, I did go in with a gray and add some nice shading underneath his wing. You can see there and things like that. Next, I'll die cut him real quick. I'll color and then I'll color in the tree stump and my fox. I kind of did a lot of coloring and die, die cutting as I went for this card. I wasn't sure exactly how many extra images that I would want for the design and so I kind of just kept building it up until I felt like I got it exactly the way I wanted it to be. I thought this fallen tree stump would be a, a nice little addition lying across the uh, bottom of my card. I used most of the same colors that I used for the birch trees. I did go a little bit darker for this one just for variety. Went over some of those little marks in the trees and things with the darker color. Go ahead and die cut this as well and then I will color the fox which he was super fun to color I think. Very cute little image. And I love that so many of the images in this Joy to the Woods stamp set will coordinate with back with other Lawn Fawn stamp sets. You could use the little bunnies from Snow Day and just all kinds of different critters. Combine them to make all kinds of fun cards. Now I'm going pretty light on the sides of his face and the tip of his tail and then going in with some nice orangish and reddish browns for the rest of his body. And I started in kind of feathering it just because I wanted to be careful that I didn't get the color too far back into his hindquarters. I wanted to keep it a little bit lighter. Um, if you're ever looking for inspiration for coloring your images, a lot of times I will just do a Google search for uh, foxes, let's say, or even like the cardinal, and it'll bring up all kinds of images and that really can help you when you're choosing your colors that you want to use to color in uh, your little critters and things like that. I think it's a great uh, jumping off point when you're starting to color. So once I have it kind of feathered in, it's really messy and it looks really awful, I think. So I went back in and started blending out now. I'm blending and blending pulling that color a little bit further back and then I can go in with my lighter colors and blend that even more and you can see it's starting to blend those two together. Pulled in a little of my mid-tone color and then back with my lightest and I'm really getting more of the color and the look that I'm wanting now. I even took a little bit darker brown to add some shading and shadows and a, add a little darker tip to his tail and ears and coming up off of his nose. Once I have him all blended out, I can die cut him as well and then color in the holly leaves and the birdhouse. I'm using some basic greens and reds, pretty traditional Christmas colors for these. Not These are pretty small, so I don't really need to do a whole lot of shading and things like that. color in the birdhouse. Now for the birdhouse, I did color in that, that heart there in the center. However, I drew some little lines on my birdhouse once I got it all colored in to make it a little plaid birdhouse. 
and I got a little aggressive with my white pin, which it ended up being okay. In the Joy to the Woods stamp set, there is a little heart. So I stamped it with some red ink and then die cut it with its coordinating die and popped it on top of the heart on the birdhouse. And that covered up any mistake that I made, which that was really nice so I didn't have to recolor the entire design. Once I have those colored in, I'll go ahead and add my dies to those and run them through my Big Shot machine and I'm ready to put my entire card together. Now with my frame here, I did die cut another of those of that A2 size stitched rectangle. I need that to be the front frame for a shaker card. So I adhered that directly to the back of my white frame and now I am trimming my foam adhesive to fit that frame and I'm going to double it up. I didn't show that right there yet, but I did double it up. That way the sequence that I'm using as shakers have room to move. And then I'm simply kind of figuring out where all I want my trees to go, which trees I want to go in front of the vellum, because I want some of, some of them in front and some of them behind. And I'll tuck those in place. Once I have most of them that I'm putting behind where I want them to go, I can adhere that back snowdrift. I'll take the trees that I'm going to place on top of the vellum now. Had to adjust some things. I, got, I didn't get them quite straight. I can place my t other snowdrift on top of the vellum. And then I can start adhering the rest of my trees on this layer. So I have my base layer of pattern paper, and then I have a layer of trees and the back snowdrift. Then I have the vellum layer, and then another layer of trees with the top snowdrift. This gives the illusion of depth and dimension without the bulk. I am not adding additional layers of foam adhesive here since I have the foam adhesive on that front frame to make a shaker card. If you wanted to nix the shaker portion of the card, you could create the same design and totally leave out all of the frame portion of this, or you could even use the frame and frame up your design without the shaker. So very easy. In fact, I originally thought I wouldn't, and then I decided to go ahead and do one just for fun. Now I placed that tree a little too high, so I simply just tucked it a little bit lower because anything, that little cutoff portion will be hidden with the frame so that my cardinal can still be seen when he's sitting on that branch. Here's that little heart that I stamped and die cut to place on top of my birdhouse. And I'll tuck the little tree stump in there. And the little holly. I keep moving my top frame back because I want to make sure I don't place anything too far down where it's not going to show up once I have my frame in place. You would hate to have all of that work on there only to find out that it's not going to show up. Now, I have a few more things to do before I add my shaker. On the vellum, I'm using the powder clean tool from Inka Dinka Do because I'm going to do a little embossing. I stamped the little dotted line to hang my birdhouse from a tree branch. And I'm using the Seasons Greetings from Winter in the Park and the little snowflakes as well. I'm going to stamp all of that. The greeting and the little bird house hanging element I'm going to emboss with gold and all the snowflakes with some white embossing powders. So I'm doing all of my stamping. I added the embossing powder but I haven't heated it yet. Once I have all of the stamping done, I'll add the embossing powder and heat that up and then I'm ready to complete my card. So I've heat embossed all of that. I've doubled up my foam adhesive. I'm going to sprinkle in some white and gold sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. And then I'm going to take my card to my foam adhesive frame, line it up really carefully, press that in place really good and flip it over and I have a cute little shaker card. I'll just adhere this to a card base now and my card is ready to go. I hope you've enjoyed this video showcasing the brand new Lawn Fawn Joy to the Woods stamp set and coordinating dies. 
All the supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.